Jeff, right. follow me and record. Okay. Follow me and record. Okay. Give us space. Don't I'm not. Good. Give us space. Okay. No, What's, your space? What's your space? What's your space? Jack. Hey, hey, hey. Stay back. I'm going in my house. Stay back. I'm going in. If you try and come past me, you're going to go on the ground face first. Do you understand okay, me? Okay, and then I'm going to file a complaint go, against you. Your camera. Time and time again, history has shown that power can be intoxicating. There's something about the human psyche that makes certain people turn into savages when they have power over others. Luckily, the advent of technology like smartphones and the enforcement of compulsory body cams for police officers gives us ordinary folks a great tool to fight against the tyranny of these unhinged officers of the law. But no one expected to see teens and kids stand up to corrupt cops and fight against their oppression. Today we explore videos where kids exhibited a basic understanding of their own rights and how much authority a policeman actually has. Our first video for today is a prime example of why people with frail egos should never be allowed to become police officers. It all started with a standard traffic stop due to using high beam lights while driving a vehicle within city limits. It turned out that the driver, a student by the name of Taven Galanakis, knew that his lights were out, so he used his high beams so that other drivers would notice him. He said he turned them off when he passed other vehicles, but the officer had something else to say. Hi there. How you doing, sir? Good, how are you? Good. My name is Officer Winters with the Newton Police Department. The reason I pulled you over is because you have your bright lights on. Yeah, but I have a headlight out, so I just keep my brights on. Okay, well that's not legal. Oh, is it? No. Yeah, I turn on when a car, when a car comes by, I turn them off, but like, when you didn't with me. Officer Winters proceeded to explain that the driver should have switched off the long beams at least 500 feet away from an oncoming vehicle, and the driver said he didn't know that. He's also not supposed to use them within city limits, so at this point, it's obvious that this college student is about to get a ticket, and he doesn't protest that at all. The officer then asked for his driver's license and registration and asked where he's coming from, to which Mr. Galanaka supplies from a friend's house. My guess is that this was the answer that gave Officer Winters reason to think that the student was impaired. He directs him to exit the vehicle and sit in the passenger seat of the squad car, where the interrogation continues. Where are you coming from? Back by, uh, his name is Creighton, his friend's house. Okay. What are you doing at Creighton's house? We were just hanging out. Had my girlfriend there. I gotcha. Let's take a moment to view this from Officer Winters' side. He pulled over a student for a minor traffic infraction. He later claimed that the student had watery bloodshot eyes. Add to that the fact that it was a student coming from a friend's house where they hung out, and it's reasonable to suspect that the driver had something to drink or had taken other substances. I mean, that's what often happens at college parties. Having said that, that's where the justification stopped. The officer also claimed that the student exhibited slurred speech, which was a lie. As you will soon see, Winters was hell-bent on making it look like Mr. Galanakis failed the sobriety test miserably, when in fact it's clear that he didn't understand or hear the instructions in the first place. Sitting in the squad car, Winters further learned that Galanakis was a football player, and as you'll soon learn, that's a very important piece of information. I've had nothing to drink. Okay. So your movements in the car with you fumbling over the registration? Yep. Um, kind of say otherwise. All right. And so does the odor of alcohol coming from your person. Great. Let's, let's do a test and we'll, we'll get to the test. I can't wait. <laughs> this was actually the second time the driver asked for a breathalyzer test and was refused the test. My guess is that the officer was starting to doubt his hunch that the student was impaired, but he was adamant about taking this all the way. So he resorts to a field sobriety test, even though the kid's in his shorts and it's pouring outside. I'm going to have you stand with your heels and toes together, with your arms down to your side. Okay, I'm going to check your eyes. Cool. Okay, what I want you to do is follow my finger with your eyes and your eyes only and do not move your head, okay? Yep. Do you have any questions? Nope. What, what color are your eyes? Hazel. Hazel, do they ever change colors? Nope. Okay, not that you know of. Okay. An interesting fact is that these tests are constructed in a way that they're extremely easy to fail, ensuring that the officer gets probable calls to detain you. Also, they can be incredibly biased, as we learn from this case. We can see Mr. Galanakis walk the line remarkably precisely, but Winters reprimanded him for doing 14 or 15 steps when he was instructed to do exactly 9. 
Galanakis replied that he understood the officer would tell him when to turn. It was obviously a misunderstanding, but Officer Winters will consider it a failure. Before starting the final part of the test, we see another example of how the officer tries to push the narrative of Mr. Galanakis being drunk. The driver is supposed to raise one of his legs six inches off the ground and keep it still. You have any questions? Nope. All right, during this, keep your arms down your side. Why are you shaking so much? It's freezing, man. Look at you, you got all these clothes on, and I got it. Shorts on and it's raining. And you false accuse me, so of course I'm gonna be a little nervous. During this ordeal, Taven realized that Officer Winters was dead set on arresting him, and he says it clearly several times, just as he did now. Then, Winters decides to do another eye test, to which Mr. Galanakis replies once again, asking for the breathalyzer test. So, just let all that sink in. Officer Winters had plenty of opportunities to realize he was mistaken and let this student go with a ticket for the busted light, but his bruised ego prevented him from doing so. Instead of that, Winters tries another test, and then another one. Amazingly, Mr. Galanakis seems to ace each of these tests, but Officer Winters is still not backing down. So. Eventually, he resorts to the breathalyzer test, and the result is 0.00. .00. What do you think he'll do next? Okay, you can relax. Um, so I'm going to read you Miranda, okay? When's the, right now you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed to you before any question, okay? Yes, sir. When's the last time you smoked weed? I do not remember that. Tonight? Who? Oh. Okay, well, I would... And that's how easy it is to shift the narrative. Until a moment ago, the officer was sure that Mr. Galanakis was drunk. He even said he smelled alcohol on him. He also made several false claims about Galanakis, such as him having bloodshot eyes and exhibiting slurred speech and lethargic movement. And then there was that whole sobriety test debacle. So, after realizing Mr. Galanakis passed the breathalyzer test as well, it was time to switch to the next narrative, and that was that he must have taken drugs. But the fact of the matter is, is that Mr. Galanakis is a football player, and he also stated that they're tested once a week. If traces of were found in his system, he would have been immediately expelled. But even that wasn't enough for Officer Winters, who further abuses his power by arresting Mr. Galanakis. At the police station, Galanakis was further examined by a drug recognition expert who confirmed that there was no reason to believe he had taken any drugs. Bottom line up front, uh, we're going home tonight, okay? I don't think you're, I have no evidence or no information to suggest that you're under the influence of drugs or alcohol. We would like to speak with you and Nate. I have to hand it to the kid. After he was cleared, he requested to speak with the arresting officers, just to make them feel stupid. It was kind of an I told you so moment, but let him have it, he earned at least that much. Now most people who are familiar with this case believe that the epilogue of the arrest was Mr. Galanakis suing the police for unlawful arrest. However, it doesn't end there, as the authorities decided to fight back. The city of Newton and three of its police officers decided to countersue Mr. Galanakis for defamation because he apparently made false complaints against two of the police officers involved. It seems that their egos remain inflated because instead of admitting their mistake and changing their ways, they decided to instead punish a young man who was only fighting for his rights. The next cop in our lineup is Michael Ciccini, a former Bay City, Michigan police chief and public safety director who on September 17, 2022, just couldn't stand the sound of screeching scooter tires. I'm gonna beat your and then I'm gonna take you to jail. What, what'd I do? Get out of here. I didn't even do nothing. Yeah, you did. What'd I do? What'd I do? Go. And just like that, the deed was done. A cop's career went down the drain, and two teens got their five minutes in the spotlight. But how did it come to this? Let's see how the actors of this real-life drama portray the events that went down. I was riding, you know how like when you press the brake, the back wheel locks up and it makes a squeaking noise, right? Okay. Yeah, you can drift when you do that, it's kind of fun, right? Okay. I get it's kind of late and stuff, right? Right. But he's up there, he goes, hey, Big Shot, you want to go? Right? Because I said, he said, why don't you keep it down? I said, I'm not doing nothing wrong. He goes, hey, Big Shot, you want to go? Right? So, obviously, you know, I'm a dude, 18 years old, I can hold my own ground. Okay, so them's fighting words. At this point, it looked like there was going to be a fight. However, even though the young man didn't know who this man was, as soon as the officer came down, he flashed his badge. And this teen knows better than to hit a cop. He then demonstrated how the officer assaulted him with a flashlight by jabbing him in the ribs. He's adamant that he never touched the officer, even though the cop was baiting him to do so. My hands were at my sides. I don't know. I didn't swing at him. I didn't pick up. What I didn't... did you do when he walked down? 
I just stood there. I said, what's up? Like, I, you know, I didn't know who he was. He looked out his badge. I think he was a cop. I'm not going to stand that cop, you know? I have more respect than that. He's like, hit me, hit me, hit me. And like, points toward his chin. Like, I'm going to hit him. And I said, no, I'm more mature than you. I'm not going to hit you. That's all nice, but I bet the officer in question has a different take on the situation. Let's see what he had to say when officers arrived at the scene. Right off the bat, the chief starts by basically ordering the officer as to how he should handle the situation. Two charges right oh. here. Notice how he didn't specify what charges. The way I see it, he's insinuating to the officer that he should charge these teens with whatever he can come up with. Come here, they hit the cone, they're messing around here around this new monument. It went on for about five minutes, okay? I'd had enough. I'm upstairs. All right. I okay. said some bad words, all right? Okay. He challenged me to fight and dared me to come down, okay? I came down. The chief came down and we all saw what happened. To be fair to him, he did not hide the fact that he hit the kid with the flashlight, or as he calls it, a pectoral jab. Still, it is considered battery. And as a police officer, he should have known better. But let's see how the altercation played out after the jab. Let's go. What did I do? Go. Isn't that better? Get out of here. Disturbing the peace. You hit me because of disturbing the yeah, peace. Yeah, it's a crime. You need to go. How did I disturb you? I didn't see anyone else wake up. You need to get out of here. Right now, you disturbed my peace. Please. You just committed battery. No. It's obvious that this police chief was using intimidation tactics to make these kids go away. You can see him even flashing his light in the face of the team, even though there was no reason to do that. After that, the officer suddenly lowers his tone as well as his demeanor, but by that point, it's too late. The kid was right about him committing battery, and after an official complaint was made, the chief was charged with assault and battery. After that, he decided he'd had enough, so he resigned from the force. It's sad to think that because of just five minutes of screeching tires and a bad judgment call, an officer's career was tarnished forever, especially because it's not like he battered the kids into oblivion like other cops do. Do you agree or do you think he got what he deserved? That chief of police got his karma for overstepping some boundaries in his interaction with two teenagers. As always, the key is knowing your rights and not letting corrupt cops trick you into saying something that might incriminate you. Our next video features a teenage boy who lays down a textbook example of how to handle a nosy cop. At the e-cig store? Hey, who? The e-cig store? E-cigarettes? How old are you? 17. You're 17? Where are you coming from? The rec. The what? The rec. The rec center? Yeah. What's your name? Why? In case you missed it, there are a couple of important hints to pick up just from this short interaction. First of all, the officer is doing her job. She supposedly responded to a call from an e-cig store about someone acting suspiciously. The problem is that as you'll later see, she's supposed to be looking for a person in black trunks and the kid is wearing blue ones. But she's allowed to ask questions and get information. What's more important is the teen's demeanor. He's calm and polite. He doesn't immediately confront the officer with attitude and even answers a few questions. However, when he starts to feel uncomfortable with the interrogation, he calmly shuts it down. Yeah. What's your name? Why? Because I'm asking you for your name. No, I don't have to give up my name. Yeah, you do, because I'm investigating a suspicious person and you have to give me your name. Suspicious ain't a crime, though. Uh, it is. So being suspicious is a crime? Yeah, if you're doing something At this point, the officer is caught in a lie, so she diverts the conversation, asking the teen to step aside so he's safe from ongoing traffic. I need to point out two important elements in this short dialogue. First, this is the moment the teen has had enough, and he stands up to the officer, demonstrating that he's familiar with the law. The key element to be aware of is that he's still calm and collected, and answers in a respectful way so he doesn't risk further escalating the conversation. Shamefully, the officer then blatantly lies to him, claiming that being suspicious is a crime. Luckily, this kid knows better. What is your name? I don't need to give out that. I didn't, be, I didn't commit no crime. How do I know that? You don't need to know that. I know that. Can you call your sergeant? Sergeant. Yes, you do. For what? Because you got to. It's your policy. You better do it. That's the thing. The teen is right. That is the thing. And in most units, the sergeant is the first line supervisor. So it's obvious what the teen is requesting, even though this officer is trying to evade the request. 
Keep in mind that the supervising officer does not have to come to the scene, but is expected to somehow come in contact with the suspect. Anyway, this team has decided that he's had enough. Okay. Bro, I know the law. I'm not dumb. I didn't say you were dumb. Then why are you trying to play me for stupid? I'm not. I'm Yo, telling call you. your sergeant. You want to talk to call me? Call your sergeant. For yeah. what reason? Because I asked. I'm, I asked you. That's your policy, ain't it? No. Yes, it is. You want to tell me that for real? Are you sure? Yeah. 100%. What's your badge number? 246. What's your name? Cummings, right here. Notice how her demeanor changed. She's no longer inquisitive and seems quite reluctant to call in her supervisor because she knows she's interrogating the wrong person. Somebody called about someone that somewhat matches their description, but what I see your What store did you say include. again, please? So what? What store did you say? The E6 store. And E6 where is it at? It's on this road. I came from that away. Okay, I believe you. Listen to this. No, she doesn't. But that's okay. What's not okay is the sleazy way she approached this conversation and how she tried to trick the young man into relinquishing his rights. That approach is precisely what deteriorates the trust and faith people have in law enforcement. How can you feel safe if they're trying to trick you into possibly incriminating yourself, even though you're innocent? But wait, it gets worse. Then why you keep questioning me if I haven't done nothing? Well, now that I'm looking at your pants, I see they're black, and I was told they were blue pants, so, I mean, no reason to get all hyped up with me. I'm not. I'm just asking why you okay, just Okay, you still want to speak with my sergeant? I'm, am I free to go? Yeah, I'm going to give you my All card. of a sudden, the officer is very forthcoming. She gives the teen her card and even writes her sergeant's number on it. And even though she acted in a sleazy, deceitful way, this situation was resolved relatively easily due to two factors. First, the teen kept his composure, remained calm, and knew his rights. On the other hand, the officer had enough sense to notice when the situation wasn't going her way. And instead of escalating the conversation, she accepted it and moved on, which is more than we can say for the next corrupt cop on our list. Our last clip for today is just so incredible we had to include it in the list. The kid in question is 15 years old, and he was able to hold his own against multiple policemen who were large enough to pulverize him if they chose to do so. The ordeal started when he was driving his gas-powered bike down the street, and a neighbor started complaining, threatening to beat him up. The kid's father, Mike, then got into an altercation with the neighbor who threatened his son. But the cops were called by a second neighbor who watched the whole thing and stated that Mike had a gun concealed in his waist. Here, we see the officers approaching Mike's house. Can I help you? Hello, are you, uh, Michael? Hi, uh, can I help you something? Yeah, uh, we're here about a... And your name? Uh, Officer Rodriguez. Uh, first name? Jim. Jim, how are you, Jim? Can and I... your name? Please? Sure. Oh, sir. Sorry, badge number? What's that? Badge number, okay. please. Let, let's go ahead and talk about the incident that you had out here a few minutes I ago. don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Just step down here for me. No, thanks. Yeah, no, no. This is how the altercation started, and it resulted in Mike getting tased several times and getting arrested. But the star of the show is his 15-year-old son, who started filming when he heard the commotion. Here's what he witnessed coming down the stairs. Okay. I am cooperating. You're hey, violating stop. my Fourth Amendment hey, right. Oh, stop. Outside. You're violating my Fourth Amendment hey, right. Hey, you guys cannot come in here without Greg, a search warrant. You're going to be taken. I'm videoing. Don't cooperate. I'm cooperating. You. No, I'm not fighting you. We're fighting you. I'm not fighting you. So the bottom line is this. The officers believe Mike had a gun, which was not confirmed. They unlawfully entered his house, forcefully took him outside, and arrested him, tasing him several times in the process. Later, Mike claimed that he did not have a gun during the altercation with the neighbor. But the funny thing about this situation is that Mike has a concealed carry permit and he does own a gun. That means that he was allowed to have the gun on his person even during the altercation, as long as he did not brandish the firearm or threaten someone with it. And none of the neighbors mentioned that. In effect, even if he had the gun during the fight, it was perfectly legal for him to do so, making this arrest unlawful, not to mention completely unnecessary. Let me just show you the highlights of his son's altercation with the officers. Jack, follow me and record. Follow me and record. Give us space. I'm not... Give us space. Okay. What's your space? What's your space? Jack, Jack, record the whole thing. Oh, here. Talk to you? He recorded the whole thing. This guy is out of control. 
Okay. What's your badge? What's your, what's your name? Step back. I'm look, not, look, 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 he I'm just touched me. You can record all you want, but you're stepping back right now. Hey, hey, hey. Don't back. touch me. Stop harassing me. We're just trying to. We're just I'm trying videoing to. this. You can please get out of my personal space. No. Yes. You're, you're not going to you're not going to interfere with what we're doing. Space. This is my property. Please you're not going to interfere with an arrest. I'm chill. I've been chill. You can record all you want, but you're I'm going to stand right here. Please move. You're in my personal space. No. What's your name? Yeah, I do not need to give you that. Yeah, you do. Jack, For what no, reason? Jack, don't do because anything. you're involved I know. in this. Don't, don't I'm, I'm involved with this, yes. But this guy yep. threatened me and called the cops on you. And what's your what's your badge number? What's your name? What's your badge number? Badge yeah, number. That says name. 3K12. Okay. Now, what's your name? I'm not making any statements. You're not okay. Okay. Well, you're going to sit tight for me. No, okay. Not anywhere. I can go in my house no, if I want. No, Am I detained? You're detained. For what reason? For what? That guy threatening me? Why isn't that guy going to jail? That guy threatened to beat me in his ass. So that's, why aren't you guys arresting him? That's not the why are you tagging? Yeah, he can just lie. Jack, yeah, we're trying. Jack. You can't. Hey, hey, hey! Stay back. I'm going in my house. Stay back. I'm going. In. If you try and come past me, it. you're gonna go on the ground face first. Do you understand okay, me? Okay, and then I'm gonna go, file a complaint go, against go you. Your camera. Go grab your camera. Yes, I'm allowing you to do that, but you cannot walk in my house. So that was just part of the altercation involving a 15-year-old boy with police officers. I must say, that kid is fearless. The way Officer Rodriguez approached him and threatened him was enough to make most grown men soil their pants. Yet this kid kept his nerve, continued filming, and even berated the officers for overstepping boundaries. Eventually, the family sued the police, but the case will probably drag on for years to come. The aftermath of this confrontation was an internal investigation that concluded that Officer Rodriguez violated five department policies, Officer Thor 3 and Officer Ware 1. The first two were instructed to complete corrective actions, which they failed to do. One of the officers got fired and one of them also got arrested. Do you think they got what they deserved? I have to admit that I often find teens who mouth off to people to be obnoxious and bratish, but the kids today blew me away with their sheer tenacity, the ability to remain calm under extreme pressure, and having the nerve to stand up against tyranny the best way they possibly could. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next brush with people who decide to break the law.